All right, it's time for The Secret Shortcut by Mark Teague. And as I read this book, you might meet some of Mark Teague's favorite characters, Wendell and Floyd. The Secret Shortcut. On Monday, Wendell and Floyd were late for school. They had nearly been captured by space creatures, they told their teacher. Ridiculous, said Mrs. Gernsplatt, and she warned them not to let it happen again. Space creatures. But on Tuesday, it was no better. Pirates were loose in the neighborhood. It was sheer bad luck. Wendell and Floyd explained when they showed up late for school. Preep! Posterous, said Mrs. Gernsblatt. It's the pirates. Peg leg there. Parrots. And on Wednesday, even though Wendell and Floyd left early, a plague of frogs made them late once again. Absurd, cried their teacher. I'm warning you, be here on time tomorrow or else. And no more. Crazy excuses. There's got to be a way to get to school on time, said Wendell. We'll just have to leave earlier. Floyd arrived at Wendell's house so early the next morning that the sun was barely up, and Wendell was still in his pajamas. I've got an idea, said Wendell, as he quickly got dressed. We'll follow my secret shortcut and get to school even sooner. Shortcut? asked Floyd. I didn't know there were any good shortcuts to school. This is the secretest secret shortcut of all, said Wendell. In fact, I invented it myself. He led Floyd up up the alley by the Ulick's backyard then down a culvert, over a fence, and through a dense thicket of blackberry vines. Uh -oh. Then they scrambled over some boulders, down a steep bank, and across a narrow stream. This is some shortcut, said Floyd. Relax, said Wendell. We'll be there in a minute. But the forest became thicker and darker. Soon it was hung with vines. The screeches <coughs> of strange jungle animals echoed all around. Maybe we took a wrong turn, said Floyd. I'm pretty sure the school is right up ahead, Wendell told him. Look where they are. Look at all the strange creatures. But the jungle only grew wilder, and when the boys finally came to a trail, it didn't lead straight to school, as they had hoped. Instead, it meandered, meandering trail, through the quicksand swamps and past large, sleeping crocodiles. and across a rocky gorge. There's Wendell and Floyd. I think that's a sloth and a stork. There's a stork's nest and a toucan. There, you can see the toucan right there. It began to get late. This is going to be hard to explain, said Floyd, and they stood in a small clearing. I have an idea, said Wendell. We'll climb a tree and see if we can spot school. Look at the, look at the, the monkey with his tail wrapped around the little snail, eating a banana, a jaguar there, a snake, a rhino. There they are. They're going to climb a hornbill. They chose the biggest, 
tallest tree they could find and climbed all the way to the top. Do you see the school? asked Wendell. I don't even see the town, said Floyd. They watched some monkeys playing in the treetops. I have another idea, said Wendell. What is it? asked Floyd. He was getting tired of Wendell's ideas. We'll swing from these vines, just like the monkeys, said Wendell. That way, we'll travel much faster. Swinging from the vines like the monkeys. Okay. Soon they were swinging from vine to vine. This isn't bad, shouted Floyd. I bet we're making good time. I knew this shortcut would work out, Wendell crowed. But at, the mo but at that moment, they ran out of vines. Uh-oh, that beetle. The boys landed, plop, plop in a giant puddle of mud. Now what do we do, asked Floyd. I don't know, said Wendell. I'm out of ideas. And they sat in the puddle and thought about all the trouble they were going to be in. Mrs. Gernsblatt will never believe this story. It is sort of crazy, said Floyd. Just then, from far away, they heard the school bell ring. Did you hear that? cried Wendell. That was the first bell. We can still make it if we run. And they ran until the jungle gave way to forest, and the forest became woods, and then they scurried through the Mortley's backyard and up the hill to the school. They flew through the door to Mrs. Gernsplatt's room and landed squishily in their seats just as the late bell rang. Well, you made it, said their teacher, and just in time. But how on earth did you get so muddy walking to school? Floyd looked at Wendell. Wendell looked at Floyd. On second thought, thoughts, on second thought said Mrs. Gernsblatt, maybe you'd better not say. During recess, Wendell and Floyd sat in the sun to give the mud a chance to dry. At least we finally got to school on time, said Wendell. That's the main thing, Floyd agreed. And in fact, it was quite a while before they were late to school again. Even so, they never did find a really good shortcut. What the adventures of Wendell and Floyd with a mountain goat and an eagle finding a way to school.